Good day and welcome. And this is our third video looking at how to complete squares when solving a quadratic equation. And here we have a quadratic equation. Uh, in the previous two videos, I've looked at monic equations that have a 1 in front of the x squared, and we looked at how to find how, how to complete the square in those cases. In this particular video, we're going to look at how to handle non monic quadratics. And the simple solution is that we divide through by this first. In other words, we convert it to a monic form. Now, dividing everything by 2, we get rid of this and leave this. Notice I'm leaving everything as a fraction. Dividing 0 by 0 by 2 is still 0 as a result. Now we have basically a monic form. We then complete the square by following the pattern. Now, I'm relying on the fact that you either at least partly know what we're talking about or you've watched my previous two videos. Otherwise, I'd have to explain a whole lot of things again. But the, the, So the first step is dividing through by 2. The second step is getting this number out of the row because we want to place a number here that makes this an absolutely complete perfect square. And plus a half is not the number. So if we subtract it from both sides, we end up with this. And how do we complete the square? Well, again, I like fractions rather than decimals in this context. We find half of this and square it. That's the pattern. Half the coefficient of x and square it. Now, we're going to add that to both sides of the equation. What is half of this? Well, if you want to do it with decimals, things can get complicated. With fractions, I'm doing this because a lot of people have forgotten their fraction work. Multiply this by half to find half. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, and 2 times 2 is 4. All it means is you double the number on the bottom. So that's easy to do. So half of this is negative 5 on 4, and I square it. So here it is, negative 5 on 4, squared. So have you got that for the process? First, divide through by whatever this number is here. Once you've done that, move this to the other side. That's step number 2. Step number 3 is complete the square by halving that and squaring it. And halving it means just doubling the number on the bottom. That's quite easy. We haven't worked this out yet. But this is now a complete square. I will underline it because that's, it's because of that that this whole process has the name completing the square. And this is x minus 5 on 4 all squared. Now we've got to work this out. This is negative 1 on 2 or minus a half negative a half, plus negative 5 squared is 25, and 4 squared is 16. Now, I would like to combine these two fractions. So, to convert 2 into a 16, I multiply by 8, top and bottom, and I get this. Negative 1 times 8 is negative 8, plus 25, all over 16, which is... 25 minus 8 is 17 on 16. Well, that's very close to 1. Now we take the square root of both sides. The square root of this. x minus 5 on 4. I will show you in other videos the proper way of doing this. This is a little bit of a fudge that pretty well every school textbook uses. And the square root of this we write plus or minus square root of 17 over, and the square root of 16 is 4. And you should have the same denominator. Now this is why doing this as a fraction works so well, because the denominators will match up and it makes it fairly easy to handle. Now if I add 5 on 4 to both sides, then everything's going to be on 4 on this side, and I've got a plus 5 plus or minus root 17. And I've run out of space, so I'm going to go across the bottom. One root is going to be at 5 plus root 17. 
on 4, and the other one's going to be at 5 minus root 17 on 4. And you would plot those two points on the x-axis, because that's what x is equal to, and uh, they will be two of your reference points for drawing your parabola. Now, that's the process. I'm going to, if, if you've seen enough and you now understand, then you don't have to keep watching. But I thank you for watching and uh, encourage you to subscribe to my channel so you can find out about future videos or at least to leave a comment or to click the like button if you've enjoyed what you've seen. I am going to do this one more time with a more complicated example. So if you want to keep watching and learn more, I will speed up a little bit, I'm warning you. But let's have a look. Okay, you've stayed with me long enough. We're going to look at this rather more complicated and ugly one. Uh, you're not going to be asked to graph this in a test. I'd be very, very, very surprised because apart from the y-intercept of minus 1 or negative 1, uh, all the other positions, the roots, the axis, the vertex and all the rest are just awkward numbers. It's just more work than you really need. But you can get this in real life and you can have it crop up in uh, more advanced mathematics. So let's analyse this the same way. We first of all divide everything by 7 to complete the square. And notice I don't even try and work out what these are worth, I just divide them by 7. So it's a bit of a no-brainer. It's one of the reasons I like fractions rather than convert them to decimals. The second step is to move this to this side. Well, that's easy. The third step is to complete the square. And even that is easy. Remember, we find half of this, so we're going to add on something, and we find half of this and square it. Now remember that finding half just means doubling the denominator. So I get negative 11 on 14. So, so far, the hardest thing I've had to do is do twice 7, is 14. Even though it looks complicated, that's about the hardest calculation I've really had to do. If you were using decimals, it would be a bit more fiddly. Now, the perfect square is there. We have completed the square, so what's it worth? It's worth, or its expression can be contracted, as x minus 11 on 14 all squared. There it is. x minus 11 on 14 all squared equals. So we have 2 on 7 plus negative 11 squared is 121 and 14 squared is 196. Now if you haven't already done so I encourage you to learn a few perfect squares beyond 12 squared. Uh, they don't just crop up in Pythagoras' theorem. Those perfect squares appear in a variety of areas of mathematics. And it's actually worth learning a few. In fact, I know I'm sidetracked a little bit, but 13 squared is 169 and 14 squared is 196. So those two perfect squares are fairly easy to learn. And let me encourage you to do that. Now, combining these, there's a shortcut here. I don't just divide 7 into 196, because I know that 196 is 14 squared, isn't it? 14 times 14. And if I want to know how many times 7 goes into this, I can split a 14 up into 7 times 2. Because 7 goes into 14. And I just work out that. So I've got 7 times twice 14 is 28. So 7 28s make 196. So I multiply by 28, by 28, and I get 196 on the bottom. I might be able to save a line and do this all in my head. Twice 28 is 56. 56 plus 121, or better still, 121 plus 56 is 177.
Hmm. Let's now take the square root of both sides. x minus 11 on 14 equals the square root, plus or minus the square root of 177 over, and the square root of 196 is back to 14 again. And again, you've got the same denominator. So leaving it as a fraction can be advantageous. Add this to both sides, and we get x equals, everything's over 14, both sides. This becomes a plus 11, plus or minus root 177. And I think I'm too low on the board, so I will just go across here. That means the two zeros, or the two roots, are 11 plus root 177 on 14, and 11 minus root 177 on 14. And you can find those two x values as decimals now, and plot them on the x-axis, and the parabola will go through those points. So they're two of our reference points, our roots, our zeros, our x-intercepts. But there it is, completing the square. This would be harder than anything you're likely to be asked to do, as I say, in a test, or probably even for homework. But if you know the principles of how to do it, you can get very fast indeed. And I encourage you to find some quadratics and practice them. Uh, I've got sheets of them. Uh, let's rephrase that. I've produced a, an Excel workbook that you can download for free from my website. The link is below this video. And uh, there are no macros or anything in it, but if you download it and just print off some sheets, uh, it will produce randomly generated quadratic equations of the kind you want. So you can practice this. Thank you very much for staying with me and thank you very much for watching.